Hey guys, you World Carvers, and welcome back to my FIFA 16 Fine Art Career mode where last time off. I've picked up two more league wins. And I'm just unstoppable at the moment. No one can touch me. This episode, as you can see, we have two match more league matches. This first up is FC Twente. Not sure why I said so poshly, but there you go. And uh, yeah, looking forward to going up against. Hi everybody. A uh, very interesting day so far. Um, because a lot has happened. A lot has happened. For, apparently, Arsenal are going to buy Jamie Vardy for 20 million. So, uh, Arsenal fans hoping to see someone like Morata or Adariz or someone like that. Will be a bit disappointed, but maybe they'll take Jimmy Vardy as a, a, a consolation prize. I, I just Arsenal have to be wary. Hey, that's a great goal for me. Calamity. Arsenal have to be wary, and here's why. Yes, Jamie Vardy, he smashed it last season, but. Who says that wasn't a one season deal? Now, I'm not gonna say, I'm not going I don't want to split the wrong message to get out. I'm not saying that he can't score a good enough uh, goal for Arsenal if that is indeed what happens if he does move to Arsenal. Oh. This could be a chance. I'm not saying that he won't. I'm just saying Arsenal have to be careful that you know they don't expect too much. You know, if he does keep his form going, if he does score loads of goals again, then great. But if he doesn't, I, I feel like Arsenal fans will be getting on his back and Wenger's back, back saying, saying, "Oh, they spent money finally, but they wasted it on someone who was who." Scored all his goals in one season. That's not the case at all. No, no. I, I, I feel like unless Arsenal, unless Vardy wins Arsenal League, Arsenal aren't going to be happy unless he scores a book of goals and gets them the league. Because Arsenal fans, that's what they want. More than anything, Arsenal fans. Is now a back pass referee? Okay, fair enough. Um, more than anything, Arsenal fans want to win the league. league. Fishing top four, you know. I'm sure if. I'm sure Arsenal fans are glad that they get top four. I mean. <laughs> And as a Liverpool and considering we miss out on top four almost every see is it it's a bit it, it's something that us Liverpool fans are pretty angry that ours will always get that spot instead of us. Yes, but you know. What can you do? But Arsenal, Arsenal want to win the league. Uh, winning the FA Cup, uh, no one's gonna say that's not an achievement. It's an achievement. I mean, it's the second biggest trophy you can win in England after the Premier League itself. Oof. Oof, obviously, no, Arsenal. If Arsenal are gonna win a trophy. You know, like I said, they prefer the league. But you know, I'm sure Arsenal fans 
when they won the when they won the two in a row, when they won the FA Cup two years in a row, well that the cross season the season before that. It's gonna be a goal kick. When they did that, I'm sure Arsenal fans were like, okay, we can build on this. We can build on these two FA Cups and and keep getting more trophies and well, finally he we're back to the arsenal that we were a few years ago because besides those two FA Cups since they've moved to the Emirates Arsenal haven't really won anything except those two FA Cups which is why it was a big relief off their shoulder to win the two FA Cups. And here he was, faced by the goalkeeper. That was the challenge. And uh, but if you ask an Arsenal fan, would they trade those two FA Cup Cups for two leagues in a heartbeat? They trade two FA Cups for one league win. I guarantee it. The constant cripe that Arsenal fans seem to have is that Wenger doesn't spend enough money. He doesn't buy the right kind of player he off. He seems to buy one big player maybe and then he goes for a lot of youngsters. It seems like this season Wenger is like, hey, okay, I'm just going to do what they he keep asking and, and then just go for it. It's, some people are saying next season might be Wenger's last season as well, because you know his contract is up at the end of next season. I, I think, and uh, it's unsure where he's gonna stay after next season or not. Um, well, there's still time to hit back in this game, and they're gonna. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But it would appear to me, from the signing of Jaka and going out and looking to spend so much money. On Jamie Vardy. Hell, last season, Wenger wouldn't have even spent two million on a guy like Jamie Vardy. Because obviously, he, 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 at that point, we didn't know that he'd go on to be the second top goal scorer in the league behind only Harry Kane. The count. Mm -hmm. And so that will end the threat at least for the moment. Oh, well, yeah. So get them on the attack. Yeah, it is. For, if you're an Arsenal fan, it has to be, you know, a bit. It has to be a sign of improvement that Wenger is finally listening. He's stopped being as a all Scroogey self. He stopped trying to save all the money he, and instead he's going out and actually spending it. And spending on the likes of Ajaka and, and, and if they get him, Jamie Vardy. Now, obviously, that's not enough for Arsenal. They still, if you ask me, they still need a top quality center defender and then they will have perhaps a really good chance of winning the league next season. I think right now Arsenal could def will definitely challenge for top four and if they get Jamie Vardy I'm sure they'll be uh, heavily challenging for the title but I don't know if it'll be enough to win them the league because offense isn't the only thing you need to win a league. Your defense has to be on point. Take, take, I'm going to use Liverpool as an example. Back when we messed up, it was our defense, it was the fact that we conceded it so many goals, is that what let us down. There was nothing wrong with our attack. Suarez and Sturge were banging in goals for fun, especially Suarez. As, as I don't think there's any Premier League fan who can deny that Liverpool on offense alone were probably the best team in the league 
but defense, since our defense hasn't been, wasn't the strongest, and that led to the, the like to the Crystal Palace game, where, where our defense took an early vacation, and, and and we can see the three goals. Well, now I'm not gonna try and take getting away from Crystal Palace. They took advantage of the way any other team would do. Including Liverpool, if it were the other way around. And, but a defense is a, something you need to win a league as well. You don't just need offense, your defense has to be on point. And so, well, for me, I think Arsenal should sign a center back. And then they will. We'll have a genuine good chance at, at being genuine title contenders. Very straightforward save for the goalkeeper. And speaking of teams who could be genuine title contenders next season, unfortunately, that brings us to Manchester United because they're going to have Zlatan. It is. Looking more than likely that Zlatan Ibrahimovic is coming to the Premier League at long last. Yes. And Ibra has this record where he's only missed out on the title once in the last few seasons, and in that season he came second. So now, oh, if if I'm a guy like Rashford, I'd be very worried about this because yes, let's let's look at Chelsea for an example. And here's and hang on, listen to what I'm gonna say before you know. I'm I'm sure there was a lot of you thinking Rashford. Why should Rashford be worried? Listen, look. Rashford played very good when he played last season. Five goals in, in a few games. That's not too bad for an 18 year old. But, and I know he did get a lengthy contract, but here's the problem with that Jose Mourinho managed Chelsea. What did Chelsea do with all their youngsters? They loan them out to other teams, and, and those guys almost never get into the first team. Never. Like, they'll get a few games, and then they'll go out and loan, and then when they come back at the end of the season, hmm, what if, like when, when Chelsea won the league, he or, you know, put out some the young stars who would come back by then, and to get them a game, him, and won. And Jose Mourinho was being quoted as calling Chelsea a, a small horse. First, he was doing youngsters a game. And that's the only time he was playing youngsters. Van Howell had to play the youngsters like Rashford because obviously he Man United got a lot of interest last season. And so they didn't really have any choice. But I'm just saying that with Ibrahimovic, Rashford is not going to play. Just saying, do not kill the messenger. With Ibrahimovic, Rashford ain't going to play. Okay? It's not going to happen. He might get into a cup game, or he might be sent out on loan. Now... Where I don't know what teams Man United are associated with. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I'm sure there's some team out there that you and I can, or just any lower league team. The problem with this is I can definitely see. Rashford being sent out on loan. Now, my fans, do not shoot the messenger. I'm not trying to 
So he, he, he that everyone you know, should send pressure on him. I think he should keep him just in case there's injuries. But Zlatan very rarely gets injured. Now, maybe you can chalk that up to the, uh, the uh, not being, you know, as competitive or physical as the Premier League. Maybe he'll get injured in the Premier League, I don't know. We don't know because he's never been in the Premier League. Even you know, this is the first for him, him and we'll see he, how he gets on. But, but I think it's fair to say that, you know, we'll probably you prioritize Ibrahimovic over Rashford. And even if he doesn't play Ibrahimovic, if Ibrahimovic was to get injured, or at some point during the season, Wayne Rooney. Because I can't see Mourinho playing Wayne Rooney at Saramid unless... I think Mourinho might play to a front with Rooney and, and uh, Abra. Uh, and, and that will leave Rashford out in the goddamn cold. Like I said, not, just don't shoot the messenger. Maybe that won't happen. Maybe it will. We'll just have to wait and see. And, um... There's a. Uh, I guess I'll finish it up with a uh, rumor going around surrounding my club, Liverpool. That is that we are apparently in talks with Jonas Hector. Now, I don't know how much truth there is to this rumor. Or I guess we'll have to wait and see if anything develops. Whether it's a real where the transfer is really going to happen, or if it's bullshit. I guess we'll have to wait and see. He put on all, all, well that is pretty much all the Premier League transfer rumors that I know of. that I've heard. Maybe you guys know more, or if you do, leave them in the comments section below. Oh. Oh. Oh, on this video. But, uh, from transfers to a bit sadder news. Now, I now may, I don't want any comments saying, you know, this is you know, it's a different sport, don't talk about it. I, I don't want to kind of like that, because it's it's a it's a big topic, and uh, I'm sure you've all heard the unfortunate news that boxing legend Muhammad Ali passed away today. Um, and as someone who's never watched boxing, I'm not a big boxing fan, uh, I'm more... MMA and UFC in you know WWE even would be more or or that's not a wide watch if I want to watch a physical hand on hand and sport but even for someone who doesn't know boxing, and I don't know boxing well, you know, like, obviously you can recognize some of the uh, big names in boxing, like Ali and, and Tyson, Frazier, or Lewis, it's all those, those names, names, and, uh, unfortunately it's, it's very sad, and, Who's Muhammad Ali, one of the greatest sports icons in the world? I mean, 
even if you've never ever watched boxing and you never plan to watch boxing, I guarantee you, you know Muhammad Ali. You've heard some of his quotes. It's how we've all heard some of his quotes, like float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. He, that's a pretty great one. And, and, and him saying that he was so mean he could make medicine sick, which was pretty fucking crazy. He, he, but he, he, he had his, the people who were listening to him, he had them in the palm of his hand. He, he was a great, he, speaker, he was a great, he, vocal, because he was a great man for getting through what he had to say, he, particularly through the words that he said. Which is how speaking works. Now, um, I'm I'm no wordsmith. I, I don't I, I don't have any original quotes that I can give you that will will stick with you. Ooh. but Muhammad Ali had a lot of them. Side, it took some doing from that distance. And just just. Google Muhammad Ali quotes. Just listen to them and talk. Listening to him talk is almost as fun as watching some of his old boxing matches. And that's someone from someone who who's not a big boxing fan, as I said. It, I have seen some of his older fights because, you know, I hear they are, you know, just so great. Especially the ones against Joe Frazier. Or, or they were pretty much must see. He, and it could really make you appreciate the sport of boxing even if you didn't like it. He, even if you don't like it, even if you never will like it. it just watching. In one of the Ali Frazier matches was it's just unbelievable watch it's, and, and you can bet uh, Sky Sports will probably be showing in any footage they have of those fights for the next couple of days or the next couple of weeks it's an honor probably yeah, they're probably playing in like hell today as well well I don't know I am Looked at the other channels I was only watching Sky Sports News when it came up. that some of the puddles that looked as though they might be appearing. So um, yeah, drizzle I think after the downpour. Yeah. will have quickened up the pace of the ball across the surface when the rain really felt. I mentioned that I watch USC and WWE. There's guys in that who. Who are great on the mic. People like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who even non wrestling fans will know from the Fast and the Furious movies. He's, he's. Even if you're not a wrestling fan, you probably know Dwayne The Rock. I mean. Rocky got one of his. his, uh. Famous nicknames, the People's Champion. He got that from Muhammad Ali. He, little fun fact for you guys. So um, and there's also, and The Rock is another er, example of someone who could hold you in the palm of his hand, no matter what he was talking about, whether it made complete sense. Or if it was just random gibberish, it's, it's whatever he said, it held you in the palm of his hand. And, 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 and I can't help but feel like he, he, some of that was maybe inspired by Muhammad Ali. I don't know, I don't know The Rock personally, he, so I can't say for sure. But considering he got one of his nicknames from Ali, I'm guessing The Rock was a bit of a fan, maybe a huge fan, and so, who knows. 
And they haven't got too much. It's a shame to the rock doesn't uh, get his uh, cousin, and you can't see me doing air quotes. Long balls forward that they his uh, air quotes cousin air quotes. It's Roman Reigns to watch some Raleigh like, be to get it better on the mic because Roman oh, Reigns sucks. That's a wonderful goal right into the top corner of the net. It's like hell. But uh, and another great talker, great personality on the mic is UFC fire Conor McGregor. Her, her. He is just. He is just a bit mad. Maybe that's because he's Irish. You know, we're all a bit mad. It's just the way we are. Her. Don't judge us. We don't judge you. Ooh, if you're not Irish, if you are, then you know. You know. We're, we're a bit mad. We're a bit mad. That is a country. But, McGregor is another person that. That when he speaks, you feel like he, 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 every word he says has a great meaning. I don't, no, I can't say for sure. Or again, I don't know Conor McGregor. I don't know if he, you know, as a professional firearm is booming. He watched some, maybe some early Ali fights. Some of these fights when he was younger. Or, like I said, I can't say for sure because I don't know Connor. Her personally. Hmm. He. Uh, Connor McGregor is another example of a great talker. Or, or who could hold you in the palm of his hand throughout whatever he was talking about. Alright. It was amazing. And Muhammad Ali will be remembered not just for his in-ring his in-ring boxing career. His in-ring boxing career is one of the greatest that there ever will be. He, the man is a legend, and, and quiet. Honestly, no one can, can say a bad word about him. If you do have a bad words to say about him, just you know, leave it out. Oh, I'm not. No one's gonna put up with that bullshit. It, it Muhammad Ali, he is, is and always will be one of the greatest professional sports. Hurts performers there ever will be. He, and that legacy he, he will continue because as some of the great boxers today, I guarantee you, were inspired by Muhammad Ali. Guarantee. If not a good few of them, maybe even all of them. I mean, if not from Muhammad Ali, we might never have had Mike Tyson. And I know a lot of people really want to see that fight in. He, I don't know what that fight would have been like, but what I do know is, is my he condolences go out to the family of Muhammad Ali. He, he because the man. And will always be he he one of the greats and a true who professional legend. So uh Oh yeah. Sad hey but his legacy will always remain. Until next time, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, smash the like button if you did subscribe if you're new to the channel, leave a 
comment in the comment section below of maybe your favorite Ali quote or your favorite Ali match. You know, who, where your memory, what the, are you a boxing fan? Where you're a boxing fan or not? I you know there's tons of people who loved Muhammad Ali. Until next time, I'm Corey Pierce, and I hope you all have a very, very nice day. Stay safe.